get started. Bit of a late stream, but uh, yeah, I just finished work. And hey, Sandy, how are you? And hey, Freedom, how are you guys? Sorry, I've literally just finished work. I'm not even the healthiest at the moment, so do apologize. So, you have jury duty? Oh, damn. Damn, that is not fun. Not that good, but okay, oh, fair enough. I am hoping what I push doesn't break any production stuff. <laughs> so, yep. Um, all right, so what are we doing today? I've got on the whiteboard, I don't know if you guys saw my post. Just easier to show you. So currently this is where we are with the bugs, except that's not 14, that's 15 bugs, which we currently have. Um, the features that we want to do, that's part of the blog post tonight. I want to, um, I probably won't do that straight away because that will require me doing some documentation and I've started um, late and I do want to finish early. Um, is Socks asleep? Oh, she's, she's here. <coughs> Oops, sorry, just took coffee. There she is. Say hi, Socks. I'll put you down here. Let's see. There you go. No. Yeah, she's been a good girl today. She's um, she's been sleeping in her bed, and she only tried attempting to knock off the webcam once. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, getting back to this, um, I want to apply two new features and fix two known bugs, and I think that will probably be very progressive today. We're also covering unit testing, which if, uh, for some strange reason, it breaks and it doesn't work, and then it works. Um, it's a bit weird. Uh, so, yeah. There's, there's nothing up there, sucks. Yeah, thank you. See, this is a bit of a weird function. I know exactly where it's broken. Ah, my partner's going good. He is going to be working this week. All right, so change task modules. I won't handle the change task modules at the moment. Let's um, let's do the new features. So one of the features is the custom validation for new usernames. So if we go into Django usernames, it actually tells us uh, what we can use. Ah, uh, he's a doctor. So we need 150 characters or fewer. And the usernames uh, alphanumeric with an underscore at symbol plus full stop and a hyphen character. So if we have regex playground. What we want, regex 101? Yeah. Or is that a good tool? This is the only one I use mostly. Oh, okay. Oh, I think I was using this the other day. Uh, let's go simple user at email.com. Scoop go socks. Be, but uh, no, no, he's he's literally a doctor. Okay, regex 150 elf numeric characters. Try da, da, da. the dot stands for all characters. Oh, okay. So if we copy this, 
I realize I've just gone straight from Mac to <laughs> Linux. Let's put in ones which won't work. So, uh, let's do, let's make sure we are using capitals also. So, so far that's all working. So the dot we don't want, the dot we want A to Z and Z A to Z. Um, matches a single point character A to Z. It's 150. So one match though. That's fine, that's the top match. Then we want, this is where I just copy this. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, well, that's what they have to know. All right, so what we want is not that underscore at plus full stop and a hyphen. And I think that's it. And then let's do a really long one. Oh, just wait, alphanumeric. So I also need one, a zero to one. And I think I need a, like that, stay on page. Uh, match every single character in that. Uh, five years. Matches a single character in the range of zero and one. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, zero and nine. Yeah, there we go. Um, and then a, a few uh, the names may contain alpha numeric and characters. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this. Oh. And I'm gonna paste it again. I'm just gonna delete it until ah, there we go. Yep, sweet. This is working how we want it to. So I believe that is a good enough regex. Uh, no, not engaged. Uh, you validate. All right, so we wanna go source JavaScript. We want Vuex, no, not Vuex, sorry, components. We want administration. And then we want admin add user. So what we want to do is on one of the models, we want to add this to it. So use a model. Um, now we should have validation somewhere in here. I'm probably thinking the wrong Admin add user. This is a modal. Yep, yeah, this is a modal, wrong one. New user. Here we go. So, view validate. We have our validation somewhere. Validation, here we are. So we want to add it to the username. And I'm just double checking that I've got the right library open, that I'm thinking of the right library because there could be multiple libraries. Oops. 
View letter date. All right. Um, I think it's this one. <laughs> uh, one day. <laughs> Um, yeah. All right. Going through the guide. Advanced usage. We want custom validation. Okay. So custom validators. Yep. Simple example includes cool. Yeah. All right, what we want is we want regex. There it goes. So we want to import the helpers. We'll have a constant helper regex. All right. Okay. All right, let's try that. Just make sure Socks is still on camera. There we go. Oop. So what we need in here is we need to import the helpers. So use ULL date, email required helpers. All right, sweet. I don't know where we're putting this this, but we'll figure it out very shortly. So, um, let's actually have read at the top of the documentation. Socks has just disappeared. So, we'll put the camera back on me. So, all right, suppose you wanna have a validator that checks if a string contains a word cool in it. You can write a plain JavaScript function that can check that. So cons must be cool. Yep, all right. On the second part is actually applying the validator. You can do it the exact way with built-in ones. All right. Requires must be cool. All right, so I don't know where I'm putting this though. My guess at the moment is it's around here. Um, actually, I want it to be part of this. So I want const uh, custom username validation equals helpers dot regex. And then we key in our regex. Yeah, all right, cool. Field must be cool. And I'm just copying this for reference. All right, so we've got regex and then, ah, nothing's in, it's like that. Okay, cool. So we come to our regex, we copy, do a forward slash, we do the, oh, oh yeah. Do all that. Then another forward slash, comma. Oh, we don't need that. I think we just need it like that now. Okay. So going down here, username model, username regex should belong in here too. I'm gonna to start creating there. Gonna 
start creating this. This will take a couple of more seconds. All right, local host is up and running. Okay. I'm just putting in symbols that won't work. Now that shouldn't have worked. All right, going back to the code. Um, optional validator. Yeah, this pattern presents often is good enough, but the validator will always return false for empty inputs. Provide parameter. Hmm. Okay. What happens if we put it in here directly? I'm just going to do it haphazardly like this. It doesn't like that. Did that or that. Mm. I bet you. Oh no, this compiled successfully. No, it didn't really. All right. Oh, there we go. Now it's showing it didn't. Let's have a look. Boards up this to fall back on. All right, successful. See if we can add this in. All right. 
let's look this up. Okay, view validate, view three custom regex validate. Let's see what else, what other people have been doing. I'm trying to create a regular expression in view validate and add it to a form with several rules. The documentation, the documentation does not exactly, sorry. Ugh. You can tell I've been working a lot today. Um, the documentation does not exa say exactly how to use some custom rules and I'm using Compositition API. I have a field that I need validating with regex. Holy hell. Good luck. The field is a CIDR form, so I create the rules to be used later as follows. All right, yep. I create the rules in this way. Company rules, company. All right, let's have a look. We've got validators, email, and all that kind of stuff. I just not wanting to read that. In fact, are we getting any um, console logs? No. Okay. Um, I'm experiencing the same issue with regex helper. Even with the simple regex, I'm using the composition API plus view three and a couple of decorators for the transmission. All right. Use view validate. All right, let's let's add user await validation. So they've got that and then RSC helpers regex and all that kind of stuff. And then they've got use view validate. So like so. And then company rules and then form. This is completely and utterly different to what I'm doing. Hmm. for this so we've got security code as it is written use sneak code oh yeah 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 that's just an ad so cons must be cool um custom rule custom rule equals helpers dot regex must be cool and we're just getting weird stuff so ah, all right they've got okay mix in yep all right i love this page is just not rendered correctly Custom validator is just a function. So function my custom validator equals return is okay. Should return as a boolean. 
Oh. Alright. So we go back here. Let's scroll up to the... It must be cool. Let's go into the new user. Let's uh, use the Mac key presses. Okay, must be cool. Must be cool. All right, wait for that to load up. Shouldn't take that long. Hit refresh, hit this. Hit this, not doing anything. All right, so. Validations, field, must be cool. Um, let's go up here, let's. Let's do something like this. Pass through our value. All right. Let's open up the console. Let's hit refresh. So empty string. So if I go at this, there's nothing passing through. Then there's a star. And then what I want, if I just want to look. Boolean value dot includes cool. Now we wait a second or two. Hit this. Let's just type in that, and it's false. Have I just got this wrong? And I'm needing to actually key something up here correctly. Validation uh, user model dot errors. So we've got this up here. But it's not passing the errors through. All right. Passing extra properties to validators. If you need to attach extra properties to your validation results to display in the error messages, for example, you can use with params helper. It will attach a dollar param attribute to your validation um, result. Just add type properties so we can retrieve it. All right. So. This all of a sudden becomes like this. So if we scroll down here, let's do a new line. Let's right hand click, let's paste. I'm gonna say it must be cool too. Must be cool too. Wait a few seconds, hit reload. It's not coming up with um, anything. I'm just going to hit reload just in case something doesn't happen. Yeah, that error isn't popping up, which is going to be annoying for someone who's trying to enter something. Let's say they enter in a wrong username or so forth like that, and it's just going to be a problem. Okay. Let's see 
what I want is I want this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to console log this out. Errors. Like so. And we're going to leave it at that for the f for a second. And we're going to look at what the console says. So if I just go blah, like this, we can ignore all this stuff. Add new user. Dollars V is not defined. All right. Yes, socks. That won't work. Okay, must be cool too is not appearing as a thing. Uh, be careful there, socks. Socks. Yes, I know. You just want treats. Okay. Yes. Yes. Talk. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Down. Good girl. All right. Param. Help us with params. All right. Param. Help with params. Param, no, we, we just want errors popping out. Come on. On the shoulder. No, no, on, are you going to behave? Okay. This one's a bit tricky. Helpers are uh, required value. All right, yeah, must be cool. That's value coming through. Extra parameters. Um, if you validate, it needs to provide a parameter. Uh, passing, all right, let's double check error. Custom error messages. All right. Uh, while validators from the view validator package come with the basic error messages and you may want to override them and define your own message your own, the best way to do this is via with message okay um, const validators equals and then name helpers with message all right I think that one's not what I want if you need to attach extra properties to your validation results to display in error messages, are oh. display in error messages. All right, I, I think that's where I've come confused. Let's hit reload. Let's hit. Let's do that. Let's go into our view. So we've got new, we've got the setup here. We've got the errors. And we've got email model. We've got the first name, last name, password, password to username model. Validator must be cool. Oh, all right, all right. I'm thinking I'm mucking this up somehow. 
So what I need to do is validation rendering. So render up. Ooh, where am I storing validation rendering? Validation. Let's uh, let's go to implementation of this. Ah, oh, it won't let me. Okay. Where is the validation rendering? Okay, error models must be cool. Validation rendering from. Ah, oh, there it is, right under there. Ah. I can't find stuff. Okay, error list, type array, um, default is nothing. All right, cool. And then error and then message. Now in this sort of case, this is passing through, user model must be cool, must be cool, params, Type required. Oh, it does need a type. All right, so that's type required for these other ones. So what we need, value is required, and it's error dollars message. Value is required is the message, message is nothing. So we'll need to add in a message. So, helpers uh, must be cool with parameters, type must be cool. So what we wanna do, let's simplify this up. Let's just delete this, delete this. Let's uh, paste this in. Must be cool. When you go down here, we delete this. So params. Let's bump this, this open like this. Uh, message. Hey, Pipfin. Uh, Nox said to inform you, I can see. Oh, that's great news. And boo. <laughs> hey. Um, I said I'd just listen. Oh, fair enough. Well, well, because you can see his socks. She's been okay tonight. She can't see. Ah. Oh. <laughs> well, how will you see socks? And my dinner. Now, this is ignore my dinner. Um, I worked literally up till about eight o'clock and I was like, oh God, I need to start streaming. I'm like, I, I can just, I'll, I've got some junk food in the cupboard. I'll um, cook something better after stream. So yeah. Yeah, she's fluffy. She's about to lose it all. Um, it is spring here. So the weather in Melbourne, we'll use Google because it has a better this shows up better. So, oh, that happened again. She has the eye on the drops, uh, which dilated. Ah, oh, all right, yep, yep. Fully understand, you can't look at bright screens. Anyway, uh, thank you very much, uh, June 1999 for the follow, and thank you very much for the resub, Nocturnal, greatly appreciated. All right, so, um, oh, we got a lovely 26 degree day on Wednesday, 16 tomorrow. So it's, it's this week hasn't been good, but hopefully next week will be a lot better. The doctor touched my eyeball. <laughs> I, I remember, um, years ago, uh, my mum had, I forgot what, what it was, but yeah, she had the eyeballs with, uh, so the eye drops, which, um, essentially do keep the pupils open and stuff like that. 
And yeah, she couldn't drive and I had to drive her everywhere. I got a day off work, which was great because I had carers leave because when I was working at the university, uh, the university was heavily unionized. So they had carers leave, which was great. I just needed a doctor's appointment. And then yeah, I was, had that day off work. It was awesome. You had the morning off, awesome. <laughs> Uh, carer's leave is like sick leave, except it's for when you're caring for someone else. Um, very useful for when you've got like a, um, a person in hospital or something like that. Um, or you've just got someone who has a medical condition and every now and then you actually need to help them. So yeah, I use that carer's leave like there was no tomorrow. And a lot of the places, all it needs is a doctor's certificate. So yeah. Um, all right, I let's just test this message out. So, oops, socks. Stop walking in the mouse. All right, uh, message test. Okay, um, and then what we just need is, I'm just going to ignore all this and just have that, the validator as that. Um, I normally just take a holiday or make it up later. Not oh, fair enough. Yeah, it was very useful having um, that type of leave. All right, so we've just added two little star things. Let's see if this actually works. So what we wanna do is we wanna open up the errors array and we've only got six this time so one two three four five oh yeah yep username model the message is still nothing uh params are okay so i haven't got that right just yet So we've got the params correct here. Um, oh. So what happens if we search on this page message? Custom error messages. Helpers with message. Okay, that's already tackled on with something but what if we go down here so it they've got let's just copy this socks that's adult food that's not adult food that's a uh, human food all right so we've got required must be cool helpers dot with message um, test message and then we just need must be cool like so and then we wait a minute we just hit reload we're just going to hit the star star oh all right this is what we want now I'm going to see if there's a better elegant way with that one I don't think there is. Yeah. Passing apps or properties. Or if you need to attach extra properties to your validator to slate error messages, for example, you can use the with params and attach the did it. Um, yeah, what if? That's the param though. All right, I think this could work. It isn't as pretty as I want it to be, but that's fine. So we've got helpers regex. I, okay, so what we want to call, we, we just want to delete this one line. Uh, 
let's uncomment. So we've got username regex. All right, let's um, comment this out so we can come back to it or reference it. Let's comment this out. Let's go username regex helpers dot with message. The username can only contain um, alpha numeric. Go to lunch. Yep. Anyway, enjoy lunch. Have fun. Zock says hi. So yeah, thank you for coming along. All right. Uh, the username can only contain alphanumeric um, values. Also, the following symbols. numeric and now we had it as doc oh this is where it's best just to go directly to the documentation um you know what i hope no one at django minds me just copying their line of code uh, not line of code uh their um their thingy they're thingy me biggie. Um, their documentation, because <laughs> this is built off Django. I'm just passing through the uh, the thing. Username regex. All right. So if we put a little thing there, I would delete this and hit save. I think that's all I need. I don't think I need to pass through the params or anything like that. All right. Let's hit refresh. Let's go da da. Required. Yep. Ah, oh, sweet. So if I go blah blah, that's fine. But if I go blah blah blah, perfect. And that's what I want. So I'm going to clean up the code very quickly. And then what we need to do, git status, git checkout, near beach, static, git status. Um, we're ignoring the static files at the moment. We only have that. So I'm just double checking this at the moment. So I should be moving over to this. Um, git diff. And I'm just gonna paste this in. So we've got that, we've got that, and we've got that. All right, I'm happy with this. So git status, git add source, everything is git status, git commit. All right, bug fix. All right, going into I don't actually have it open. So near beach you track. Are you going into bed? All right. Oh, I gotta log in. Okay, whilst I'm doing this, let's uh, get you guys to, oh, did I want to risk doing that? Need a password screen soon.
Sorry, I'm just getting distracted with a multitude of messages. Alright. Getting back to it. I should have logged in. Okay. So this is What is this one? Oh, this isn't a bug. This is a new feature. My bad. New feature. Um, username. Now passes through regex. Validation to determine if the username matches the Django standard. And then get push this. All right, sweet. Sorry, I thought that was a bug, but no, it's a feature. <laughs> All right, we, we get to move that over into testing. Scroll down to here, new features. And now we get to find it. I think it's all the way down here, not a wolf, none of that. Um, I've got to fix the sort order in here. Create fix, fixture structure under misc. Have ability to send uh, implementation a custom there we go and then we pass it over there and we're happy with that one all right so let's actually have a look at why the Kanban board is not sticky so what I want to do npm run watch here you just what are you doing socks that's the USB no biting it Boot it up. Let's go to near beach. Let's just find a random Kanban. Oh, this is our oh, local host. Yep, this is fine. So what's happening is I need to edit the Kanban board. I'm just gonna add in sprint three, sprint four, sprint five, sprint six. Uh, back to Kanban board and the idea is so I can scroll down and as you see Now in theory there should be another one that appears so if we um, if We have a look at this we should have two Kanban headers It's this one right here and when we scroll down this is meant to pop up into view but it doesn't. Okay, close all tabs. Ooh, I wanna see NPN run um, unit test here. Oops, sorry, sucks. Just grabbing a few more chips. And then I gotta hide these from myself. I'm pretty sure my partner wanted to actually eat some of those. Let's open up the game board. Band board. And band board. All right. So we got the head up.
And we got the render the sticky header here. Display none. Alright. And the idea is with the scrolling procedure, if it's under, um, make sure the Kanban sticky row matches the scroll left. All right, no, that's all fine. Resize procedure. All right, here it is. Get the distance from the top of the page. All right, this is what should be running. So I'm going to go console log scroll top scroll top all right something simple something easy let's find out what's going wrong so we start scrolling oh it's stuck at zero all right Let's find out why. Just waiting a few seconds. Doing it again. Yeah, we're still getting zero. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I think I know why. I think this is all this is in here now. Mm. Okay, what I'm gonna do, ID equals Kanban container. Container, like that. And what we want to do is we want to hit reload. And then I want var a equals document get element by ID and ban container. And then a should be this. And then a dot. And this is where we start using the page y offset. So Page doesn't have page wide offset. No. Yeah, it's undefined. All right, let's have a look. Um, determine the scroll depth. JavaScript of a development. Oh, I'm just trying to think of what I could search, how to check the scroll depth using JavaScript. Um, check inside div, check scroll depth, JavaScript. Track the crawl, yeah, all right, in a HTML div, all right. Offset top top. All right. A dot off. Set top. It's 150. And then A dot offset top. Oh no, that's going for the whole top. Even if I'm scrolled all the way down. I don't think adding dot top at the end of it is going to do anything.
Yeah, alright. Um... Okay, get offset top element, offset top equals zero, do... Alright, a lot of that is just... JavaScript, how far scrolled inside div. Uh, how to get the scroll amount if a div has the scroll, so the page doesn't have the scroll property, a div inside the element with a scroll property. All right, this looks like what I want in the looking for the page y offset equivalent of div. Parent scroll top is what you need. All right, so if we go here, a dot scroll top, zero at the moment, if we go down, a dot scroll top, there we go. All right, cool. So what we need to do, this changes. All right. So we need to bang, oops, sorry, we need to do this. We need to have our scroll top equals document dot get element by ID and then we've got the element ID which is Kanban container. Easy done. Then we need what we had is scroll top. That's all we need. Wait for that to generate. We'll hit reload. We'll scroll down. And ta-da, it works, but it's in the wrong spot. Um, because yeah, all of this used to scroll up. And then, I only spotted this recently. <laughs> all right, top, what we need to do is we need to increase that by a lot more. Now we should put it there, so 152. So Kanban sticky row. Kanban sticky row, what we wanna do is we wanna change this to 152. All right, we also need to double check this with mobile. And on mobile, <laughs> this will so the Kanban sticky row will also need to update. So we need to uh, push this down to 134. Now, oh. Yeah, this is sticky row. Okay. I feel like I'm gonna have to um, add in a specialized condition. The thing is, oh, I can't get that scroll bar properly. Yeah, we need it at 130 something. One forty two. And then we need an at media query. Oh I don't have oh wait, I'm quicker just to do this and thank you very much for the follow Frankie Gamer thank you very much I do hope you enjoy my content I really should have set my iPad up for this usually I've got all this set up um, all right da, 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 da. 
And this should tell that I'm live. Mm. All right, that's glitching out. All right, um, let's do the app media. Let's see what I've got. Minwith. Um, also started with front end development, just graduated as software developer, but did mostly back end. Oh, well, congratulations for. Um, Graduating, that is awesome news. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm I consider myself a bit of a full stack. Um, just because I do quite a lot of front end, a lot of bit of back end and stuff like that, especially at my current position. Uh, so yeah. But I have known people who prefer one over the other and that's perfectly fine. Uh, yeah. Um Welcome. I do hope you enjoy my stream. Oh, I've broken something there. Let's just, there it go. Uh, as we like figure stuff out, uh, fixing bugs and all that kind of stuff. Thank you very much. It does need a trim. I need to get a haircut. I, it was meant to happen last week. However, um, yeah, I just hadn't had time, sadly. So yes, hopefully, Hopefully this week I will get time. It's just one of those things. All right, this Kanban container. I'm also wondering if we could I noticed this the other day and this was annoying me. I am actually going to make this change too. So with the Kanban container. All right. Uh, let's go bang. And bang. But let's actually, oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's actually copy this. Let's paste it in here and let's put back the, I think it was, all right, I've forgotten. Ah, uh, yeah, yep, yeah. all right, do it like that. Like that. All right, sweet. So just making a change to this so it's more wide. I found it was way too cramped for me. It's gonna hit reload. Oh, that didn't. That didn't do it. But at least this 142. All right, let's let's have a look at the Kanban container. Screen width, max. Oh, am I meant to swap these around? Uh, I've done something stupid, haven't I? I think everything's the same apart from when, yeah, there we go. I've just done something stupid. And whether or not these need to be... Ah. I mean, I can. We'll see what people say. Yeah, I prefer the better real estate here. You can click on this to stop this from dragging, but I've just noticed this doesn't work in mobile. We make one change and we break everything. All right, and the reason being is we're minusing 70 pixels, in which case it should be 10. Oh. Eleven pixels, but no, it should be minusing five. Once again, that is a weird bug. Yeah. <laughs> It's, I, I don't know if you can see this, if you've got com uh, compression issues or anything like that. I know I um I watch streams at a little bit, right? But um, 
for some strange reason, I'm getting the blue through, but if I negative this a little bit more, you can clearly see the green go through. It's just for some strange reason, the blue is showing through. And no matter how high I put the index, I want to see if this happens in Chrome. I don't have Chrome installed. Oh, yes. Um, if you look over here to the right of the green bar, you'll notice that the green bar I've just made go through that whole entire section. If I scroll up and down, you'll notice for some strange reason, it's showing what's behind it and not what's on it. Yeah, this is weird. I also don't have Chrome installed, so... Um, do you have Chromium? No, I don't. Um, Chrome, no shell? No, 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 no. Uh, just give me two seconds, Google Chrome. I just want to see if this actually happens in Chrome. I usually use Firefox. So this is very rare with me opening up Chrome. Open when complete, come on, open, software install. I just need to key in my password. Install. Doing its thing. There we go, cool. Hell no, hell no. Okay, localhost 8000. Uh, this is using the uh, test sort of stuff. We'll never save this. Uh, we'll go to the Kanban admin only. We'll open up this. We'll go into, let's say, a Pixel 5. Oh. And thank you very much, Hunter Sport, for the follow. Welcome, welcome. I do hope you're enjoying my content. Okay, so we need to inspect this element. Now it's this one up here. This one, we're gonna say 11 pixels, but at the moment we're just gonna test it as a one. And I can clearly see it's working as expected. All right, so this is just a Firefox bug. Uh, where have I put my, there I go. So this little tiny thing, Firefox bug. I'm not gonna worry about it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put 10. I'm going to put 11. So sticky card row, Kanban, uh, Kanban sticky row. Yep, Kanban sticky row. This is then going to be 11. Or oh, actually, nope. Oh no, no, no. 70 here. 11 here because it'd be different between the mobile form and the um, and the desktop form. So we just wait a couple of seconds. We then hit reload. There we go. And then if we bump into desktop mode, yep, yeah, perfect. Now the desktop mode, oh, I want to bring that line up a bit more. Whoops. I keep pressing the Mac key bindings. <laughs> So we want the top to actually be, now we can, we can make it dead on. 
149. All right, and then we hit reload and we get rid of that. Perfect. Yeah, sweet. We've got the, uh, the switch into the sticky and everything's working again. Yeah, but yeah, we just need to tweak a few things. That's fine. These things happen. This will work perfectly fine. There is a Firefox bug there, but hey. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to go over into my code. I'll cancel that out. I'm going to clear all this. I'm going to do status. I'm going to go git add. We're ignoring all the static files because we're not pushing those up. Everything under source, git status. So I'm just gonna break this open like this so we can be like near each static, ignoring all of these because um, these are just their compiled sort of stuff. Um, I tend to only push up the production compile when I'm getting near a release. So we've got those. All right, sweet. So git commit m bug fix and then what we want to do is we want to go over into our u tracker and we just want to copy this and we just want to paste it in oh socks you okay you just slammed right on my keyboard and we want to do a git push okay now this one, we want to flag is ready for retesting, which is great news. And then we want to jump into here. We do have two blocked ones in here. Um, I am going to unblock both of those very shortly. Uh, hopefully tomorrow night. With the idea being that we've just done a, release, uh, a new feature um we'll also need to look at when users aren't attaching their groups to new objects and so forth like that uh, which should be a very easy feature to do because we're already looking at that information all right how to limit uh no not that one new wizards not passing the status correctly this will probably be the last thing we do today so what's actually happening is we've got a status of three here so we need to new project link wizard so we want to let's minimize everything let's open up near beach let's go near beach sorry we want to go source javascript components we then want to go to modules, wizards, and this is the new project link wizard. So new you know, project, is, so we need new link wizard. So what is happening? is let's go into the back end. Let's close these. We don't need these open anymore. I know I just closed that. Sucks, stop it. Good go. Yeah, we can leave that page. All right, local host. So what's happening is if we go to, let's say a project, and we want to link this object, create a link, and we go, all right, we want to link to a requirement. We're actually getting the requirement status ID there. If we go to a project, this is what we want. So if we open up the view tools, we go through the parent modules, uh, through the config provider, we then, now this is part of the object links, and then we've got link new link wizard. And if we have a look over here, we should see some data, so it should have one. We've got object results, and here we go. And then we've got the fields and all that kind of stuff. Now, the problem is a lot of this data we don't need to send 
through to this front end sort of stuff. There's two things which we could fix up here. We can keep the table if we wanted to. But my recommendation is we could probably look at using the card rendering method that we are using everywhere else. So if we go localhost 8000. 8, so this is the card sort of rendering look which I've been going for. And I feel it's a lot nicer to look at than what I've got. Uh, so for example, if we add in some team members and stuff like that, it looks a lot nicer. Uh, needs some fixing up here and there, some tweaking. Like for example, this could have been half the height and half the, the size, but you know, we'll get there with the design. Um, the other thing is we don't need a lot of these fields. We don't need the creation user. We don't need any of this information. So we should be limiting this down to what we need. Um, what, why we've done it like this originally is because we just needed to get this to work. I think that was Max. Um, so yeah, let's get into this. So what's actually happening is got a bunch of blocks and all that kind of stuff. We scroll, so we've got a watch, got methods, we've got data. So if we hit, all right, searching for, all right. Let's see where object selector is. There it is. So this will be the selector. So V model object um, object model. And we don't have searching for object model. All right. Should also check what how we're rendering these out. So it's just a simple table. Yeah, all right. Yeah, we can easily put these in cards, but the problem is we need that little tick box to work. So yeah, not overly complicated to do. And that should be a three equals. Okay. So we've got watch here. So watch object model, this link model equals nothing. If this object model equals null, okay, then remove all objects. We don't need to do anything. So it just is searching false, removes everything. Done. All right, so that's, that's a particular case where, for example, if this someone was able to unselect all that, it will remove all of this. Uh, this searching comes true. Telephone that we are searching. Yep, Axios. All right, cool. So post. Uh, this will actually go to object data, pass through the destination location, um, and the object model. And then that will go to link list. All right. And then it'll send everything back. Um, and we'll put the responses into there. Perfect. And then up here where we render the stuff. So table containing the results. Um, so it creates a table, thread, uh, object model description. Yep. So if it is a project, it'll render it in a particular way. If it's something else, it'll render in that sort of way and so forth and so forth and so forth. And what we could potentially do is we could make this really, really simple and have it 
so that it um, we don't need this many if statements and stuff like that. We can literally just be like, all right, cool. If there's data, what we want is we want to render out this. This is going to be the primary key. This is going to be the um, it's going to be the description. And there's going to be the status. I think that will be a lot easier. And that way we can remove quite a lot of these particular fields. So, yes. Yeah, I think that's going to be probably a better solution. And that way we can shrink all of these. And then we can... Sorry, shrink most of this code. And then we can deal with improving it later. So we can get this look looking like the cards and so forth like that. Because yeah, I think also if we tick that and we move to like, let's say requirement and go back to project, it unticks everything. You can see that over here with the link model. Just clears it out. All right. So what I want to do is we want to go to link list. So let's collapse everything. Let's open this up. This is where we're doing some of the backend stuff right now. So we want to go to near beach views. We also want to open up object data. We want to open up URLs too, and we want to have a look for link list. So we've got, this is the wrong one. So we've got object data, destination, location, ID, object lookup, link list. And we want to go to, and we want to go to this implementation. So currently it looks up the users groups because that's part of the permission. Uh, object lookup, uh, not in lookup functions. It just sends the person away. Data results, lookup function, object lookup, user groups, destination, location, ID. Ooh. Oh, okay, that's how I've done it. Oh, all right, let's go to this implementation. So I've got lookup functions. So we've got project lookup tasks. And this is lookup functions. All right. Hmm. Well, I didn't realize I did something like this. This will make life a little bit easier if I don't use it anywhere else. So let's actually have a look at where I'm using it. So I'm using it in object data view. So we've got lookup project project lookup and then look up that. So what I want to do is look up, look up functions. Funks, I've called them. Sweet, this is great news. So I've only used these in one spot so I can just change it how I need them to be. So requirement objects, filter, values, yada, yada, yada. So what I want to do is, and I keep forgetting the fancy way of doing this. So let's have a look. Um, Django RM field as, we need to change the field. Is it possible as SQL statement as something shiny? Um, by now, Django documentation says use extra as one last resort. Otherwise, F. Oh, yeah, annotate. And we've done this before. So there's a count. There's profile picture as 
this. So what we want to do is we're yanking those three lines as reference. We're just pasting these in as reference. Annotate and as uh, simple as um, ID equals F and then we've got requirement this is for requirement item so requirement item ID simple as that now we don't have F in this so what we need to do is we need to insert it and then what we need so we've got the ID, I'm just having a look at this. We've got the ID, we need the status description. So description equals F and then requirement item description. I just, I've forgotten what it is. And I don't think I've got admin access on my local. No, I don't. One day I'll fix that up. All right, so I need to go to the models. And I'm just finding the requirement item. Here it is. So what we've got is requirement item title. So we'll go back to here. We'll have requirement item title. So, and then we need status. And this one will be a bit different. So if we go back to the models, we'll have requirement item status, which will be part of this. So what we want to do is we want to actually find this one. So list of requirement item statuses. And then so requirement item status underscore underscore. That will connect us to this. And we want requirement item status. Like so. And I need to add in a line there. And I need to finish that off. And I need to get rid of these. All right. One, two, three, four, five. All right, sweet. So I'm just gonna quickly paste these in. It's gonna break the code for a bit, but that's fine. What we need to do is now finish this up. So we need to bang those up into place. So with this one, it'll be, whoa, all right. Ah, oh, yeah. Project ID. And then it'll be project title, I think it is. Let's have a look at our models. Project name. And this is where we're like figuring out what our status will be. So project status. I think this one's hard coded in. Okay, let's have a look. So deleting this, we're just going to fix this up. So what we want is task ID, task short description. And then I think task status again. So, all right. Now this one will be requirement ID, requirement title, 
And I believe it will be this. All right, sweet. So because we've annotated it, we also need to have just the values pop out. So that will be values and then it'll be ID, description and status. And we'll grab those five lines. Once again, we'll go through, we'll just paste them in, we'll fix up everything in a minute. And fixing them up is as simple as doing this. So, all right, sweet. Um, yeah, when we get that data, the problem is, I don't think we can do this. I think we're gonna have to serialize it a bit differently. However, let's just play around with it. So what I need to do is let's have a look at the network tab. Let's change this to project. Now, because this is the back end thing, we didn't change anything in the front end. We can just do this. We get a 500 response and it's dictionary object has no attribute meta, which yeah, this won't work. So what we need to do is we need to look up dot values somewhere else where we do this. But in fact, dot annotate is where we do this the most so return json response so it looks like we just do that data results extend all right cool so if we go into object results let's just paste this in let's do that That's data results. All right, sweet. Now, if we go is blocked by, oh, it's locked itself up there. So when there's a problem near beach, locks itself up. Okay, we got object of a query set is not JSON serializable. Ooh. Okay. Object of a query set is not, are we getting extend? All right, I'm going to look for a better example over that. So annotate. So we've got RFC update change lead, annotate. We've got filter, annotate, values. Are we importing JSON view? We should be. There we go, JSON response. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put a little uh, breakpoint on there. I'm going to stop the server. I'm going to run debug mode. That won't take too long to get into. And then here, because this is broken up. All right, something's happening. Yep, we're here. We're just going to... Oh. Yeah, socks. This is interesting. Okay, object data, let's go. Yes, socks. Let's go to these uh, functions.
Okay, look up functions. I'm gonna close everything else. We don't need check destination. We don't need this, we don't need this. We don't need this open. I'm going to close this. I'm gonna remove the breakpoint from here. I'm gonna deal with just the project at the moment. Reload, link objects, create new link, project. So it's just going through all of these. Yes, sweetie. It's coming back here, it's going over. So our data results, is doing everything correctly. So it's getting the data out. That is fine. Socks down. Just not wanting to return it. All right. So object of type query set is not. So we just Google it. I wish there was one way you could actually do all this and have it all handle and stuff like that, but no, every now and then it just wants to um, be a bit different. Sucks, will you stop doing that? All right, so. Um, we've got a simple JSON, JSON and work object. So we've got something similar. Um, so we've just got to serialize the data To return JSON response and your views, you can do is JSON serialized data, say false. Yeah, all right, cool. So what I want to do is I just want to add in something random up here. I'm just adding this in as reference. All right. Send the data back to the user. So what we've got is data results equals serializes dot serialize and then we want json and then we want data results like so um data results equals json dot load data results and then we want json response data results safe equals false and then we're just deleting all this. Keeping the old stuff there. I mean, worst case scenario, we can actually utilize this. Yes. All right. Now we just hit reload because we locked that up. Yeah, still having dick dog object has, all right. And that sort of case. It's saying it dict object has no attribute meta. At what point is it saying that? Okay, so it's here. Straight away. It's not liking this.
Let's see what the data results look like. Let's bang this on like this. All right, let's hit reload. All right, data results, query set. Okay. Let's read this article a little bit more. All right, I didn't have much in here. Uh, object of type query set is not JSON serializable. Let's have a look. I'm trying to slice them. Yep, yep, yep. Second attempt. Does it want me to do the fields? Set. Nope. Um, Jenga's built in serializers. Simple JSON and JSON don't, uh, don't work with JSON objects well. Django's built in serializers can only serialize query sets with Django objects. Right, and your case, self.query set contains a mix of Django objects and Dixon sides. Uh, one option is to get rid of the model instance self.getQuery set and replace them with models to Dict. Um, You know what? Let's follow some of these annotates. Once again, uh, this is... It's using profile picture, it's using JSON dumps. Return JSON dump. Oh! All right. Close this lookup functionality. No models. Uh, where the hell was I? Um, shoot. Link list, I do believe. Yep. Okay, so I'm just going to paste this in. I'm going to comment it out. So we've got JSON dumps. So, and then we've got list, this, and so forth like that. So what if we comment this all out? Go data results equals JSON dot dumps list data results. I don't know if this will work. CLS equals Django's JSON encoder. Don't know if this is going to work. It's worth a shot. View.objects.list 
Thank list didn't return a HTTP response object. It returned none instead. It's because I need to do that. Reload. And we got something back, but it's in this horrible format. Not a problem. What we could do is test this out. And didn't like a string object has no attribute meta. Alright, no problem. JSON dot loads. Wait a second or two, hit reload. And there we go, we've got it perfect. All right. Sweet, so yeah, we just needed to play around with it. Now, it doesn't work fully because it's expecting multiple different fields and all that kind of stuff. We're going to get console logs perfectly fine. We understand that. What we want to do now is fix up the new link wizard. So we're just going to scroll up to the top. We're going to scroll down, choose the relationship, select which object to link to. Loading placeholder. Table containing the results this is what we want. So if the object is yep, yep, yep. And then what we want to do, we've got object model. Yep, is description, status. Now with this, we won't need this. So we'll have T body and that'll be it. Um, render results. And then object results. And then from here, we have result.id. And then this will go ID. Oh, oh no, we can um, just realize that, yeah, this will be project. And so forth. I just want to check one thing. Oh, I can't because I've just changed quite a bit of it. It's going to fail. Oh no. Okay, object selector. Project, project, requirement, 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 item, requirement, item, task, task. Oh, all right. Um. Task, requirement, requirement, item. Okay, object model, post, then object response, is searching false. Yep, all right, cool, cool. I'm just double checking everything at the moment to see if I can get away with this. Um, Okay. Do I have access to the object selector? What do I have access to? So if I have projects in there, um, I'm just gonna hit reload. 
going to pick something more complicated. Requirement an item. Uh, searching is true. Object model. Requirement item. All right, I can do this. Okay, starting from the top, scrolling all the way back down. Select which. All right, load and placeholder. Table containing results. So object description status. Render results for result in object result result dot ID. Uh, we've got result ID with the ID being checkbox, and then what we want is now we've got it as object model to lower to lower. And what that will do is, if I get rid of all of this, if I go bar a equals quiet requirement item, go a to lower case, to lower case, all right. Like so. That should lower that to the, the case we need. And then we've got VLink model and label form check form label checkbox. And then what we want here is we want object model to lower case like so. Then in here we've got the project name. This will all piss off. This will be result dot title actually what else is there nothing much and finish the label and then that will be right this will be object model Actually, it's going to be that object model. And then here we've got status. And then from this point on, we're just deleting that. And that should be it. So we don't have the title there, but we'll fix that up in a minute. That will be, ooh, what's happening here? Um, requirement status, all right. No, that's not what I wanted. Oi. Um, requirement status. Can't resolve keyword. Require. Oh, I've just done a spelling mistake. Easy, easy fix. So what we want to do? Look up functions. This is why we test. There we go, easy done. Uh, we're just gonna hit reload. And we've got project, we've got requirement, requirement item, same problem. Project, pro a requirement, crime and item, task. Now, uh, we've got description instead of title, and that's why things aren't rendering. So if we just put in description, 
Hit reload. So we've got a project QA team. We'll just add that in. Project QA team, all right. And then requirement, we're adding in the top requirement, all right. So all of these are required. So we've got task one, requirement one, requirement item one, and uh, project two. Sweet, this is good. Okay, now we'll go over here, git status, git add, near beach, use, git add source, git status. We're ignoring all the static files once again. All the static files we're ignoring. All right, cool. We've just done a fix. Now we can go in and actually um, render in cards instead of um, those things, uh, the table and stuff like that. But that might happen next. That might be a UI UX bug. Um, all right, so what we want is we want to grab this. We want to go down here, git commit bug fix. And then we just want to paste this in. Then we want just want to push it. All right, sweet. So that wasn't too bad, that, it, that error. Um, yeah. Anyway, this is just past 10 o'clock. I am going to call it there because I've got to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, let's find someone to raid. Ooh, all right. Adrian. We can raid Adrian. Uh, he has raided us a couple of times. It is time to raid him. Anyway, thank you very much everyone for coming. Uh, it has been productive this evening. We've gotten a couple of bugs done. We've gotten a couple of features done. I do want to get over the next couple of days, a couple more features done, uh, a couple more bugs fixed. Uh, there is more unit um, coverage, which I want to improve, um, especially with the Vue.js sort of things. I'm hitting an error, which is a bit weird at the moment. It sometimes will happen, sometimes won't. So I'm debugging that at the moment. It's probably something in my code that's causing it to freak out. Um, this is why we do unit testing and so forth like that um, to find these issues. So yeah, anyway, thank you very much. I do hope you enjoy Adrian's stream uh, and I shall see you guys hopefully Wednesday. Bye.